Morning guys, this is Andy, the Expedition Hiker. And today, as you can see behind me, we're in Shepshed, part of the National Forest, and that's in Leicestershire. Today is a discovery of religion, as we're gonna be passing Mount St. Bernard's Monastery, which is a working monastery, and also a place called a Grace Dewar Manor School and Grace Dewar Priory Ruins. And along the way, we're gonna go past the Black Brook Reservoir and also One Barrow Lane a Viaduct. Then we're going up to Whitlock Quarry, Whitwick Colliery, then onto the Ivanhoe Way, and then heading up towards the Old School, and then heading up to the ruins of the Priory, onto the Dismantled Railway, and then eventually we'll come back to where we are at the moment. So it's quite wet and icy rain. Hopefully it's only going to last for a couple of hours and it's going to uh, dry up. So let's get cracking. So if you like hiking, backpacking, long distance walking, like to learn some tips and skills on the great outdoors, as well as download some routes for yourself, then please consider subscribing. So I'm looking forward to this one. It's an area I've walked many years ago. Uh, the only problem is I believe the monastery might be still closed because uh, it usually open to the public. Not all of the monastery, but uh, parts of it. Anyway, we're in the Charnwood Forest at the moment. Well, not that you would notice it, we're in quite a built up area. But I'm sure we'll come across some trees at some point or other. The National Forest is in the central part of England, around Leicestershire, Derbyshire and Staffordshire. It spreads over 200 square miles and it was started in the 1990s by the National Forest Company. The object was to introduce more woodland into the area by planting millions of new trees. It connects with the old ancient woodlands of Charmwood and Needwood. So how are we all diddling today? Uh, hopefully you're happy and dandy. So we're getting out of uh, lockdown, but uh, we're all still in tier three, which isn't good, but I'm sure COVID will stop eventually. If we all just follow the rules. It's, it's good to go out and exercise like I'm doing out in the woods. Now I am looking down a little bit because this is a bit of a muddy path I'm going down at the minute and I don't want to slip over near the start. So the path I'm doing today is 10 miles. It's a circular route. The main points of call is Mount St. Bernard's and Whitwick. It's a bit of a tongue twister. And then we're heading on to, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce it right, Grace Duell Manor School and Grace Duell Priory Ruins. And then we'll head back via the Dishes Railway back to Shepshed. At the moment, on my right hand side, we have Muller's Wood. We're heading down to the road and then we're going to head to Botany Bay. Now, Botany Bay is famous for its bees, the Botany Bees. There'll be a link in the description if you like your honey, because this is the finest Leicestershire honey. Just walking through the Blackbrook Reservoir, and this area covers 80 acres. It was constructed in 1796 in order to feed the Charnwood Forest Canal, which has long since vanished. The first dam constructed was an earthworks, and this failed the 20th of February 1799. In 11 minutes, the reservoir was empty, and as a result, local farmland was ruined. Sheep were drowned, and much of Shepshed and nearby Loughborough were affected by floodwaters. In front, we have the One Barrow Lane Viaduct. Now, actually, I was expecting a little bit more than this. It does just look like a bridge over some water. Autumn is ending and winter is beginning. Now, I love the changing landscape with the leaves aren't just all green. There's yellows and reds. And there's been a bit of an artist to see a colorful landscape. 
like this. It's a bit of a, a delight, although it being a bit wet and uh, chilly at the minute. As you may be able to hear from the rain hitting the water, it's getting a bit heavier, the rain. So we best crack on and uh, get down to the Oaks Road and down to the monastery. As the notice says, a sharp increase in the amount of walkers walking along this footpath, which is all good. Present situation with COVID, getting out and exercising in the countryside is good for your mental health and well-being. So hopefully more and more people will enjoy it, but enjoy it correctly by following the countryside code and taking your litter home is the key thing. Leave no trace, apart from slipping over in the mud. If you're intending to come out walking, then first of all, remember it's winter, so bring your layers. Better off to have too many layers, you can take them off. If you get too warm, then not enough. Also, your outer layer, being a waterproof jacket, would be best if you've got a hood. The best thing is your footwear. Now, I wouldn't suggest to come out in your trainers, especially if they're white not this time of year because it's muddy and they won't stay white very long so in the winter best to probably go with a leather boot or alternatively a synthetic waterproof boot now also when you come out you need to follow the country code you can find it online it's not that many things to remember if you find a gate and it's open you leave it open if you find a gate that's closed, you close it after you. Leave no litter, so whatever you bring into the area that you're walking, take it away with you. If you find a bin, just put it in the bin. But don't leave it on the landscape. It spoils it for others, for animals, and it's not good for the environment. Now there are other things as well. If you're walking down the road, it's got no pavement, then to walk single file, or maximum to abreast. That's just your safety, so you don't get knocked over. Also walk in the direction of oncoming traffic. Keep to the footpaths, they're there for a reason. Especially if you're walking through ancient areas, then there is a strong possibility you may be walking into quarries or mining area, which could end up meaning you fall down a mine shaft if you're walking in a wrong area so we've just left the footpath and we're on the road as the sign said on the left it's the monastery so we're going to take the next left and that'll take us down the lane to the monastery itself Mount St. Bernard Abbey is a Roman Catholic Trappist monastery founded in 1835. The abbey was the first permanent monastery to be founded in England since the Reformation and is the sole Trappist house in England. The monks brew the only Trappist beer in Britain. The Trappist beer is a beer made by or under the supervision of monks within the walls of a Benedictine abbey. The Cistercian order dates back to the 12th century and the Trappist to the mid 17th century. Mount St. Bernard is the only abbey belonging to this order in England. In 1844, a new permanent monastery opened through donations from John Talbot, 16th Earl of Shrewsbury, and other benefactors. It was designed by August Pugin, who offered his services free of charge. In the past, William Wordsworth and Charles Dickens 
have spent time at the Abbey. The Abbey has a gift shop and within the Abbey they sell books, rosary beads, honey, pottery, gifts and cards as well as the biggest product, their Trappist beer, Tynt Meadow. Okay, we're going to leave the abbey and we're going to take this footpath and it's going to take us towards a Whitlock quarry. On our right hand side, we have the farm, the monastery. Now, it used to be a very productive dairy farm, but due to the prices of milk declining, they decided to stop the dairy farm. Instead, they started their brewery of the Trappist beer. He's got an aviary in this garden. I can't really tell what the birds are. They look out like ducks. Not sure what they are. We're just passing Wheatlock Quarry at the moment, which is disused. It is a huge hole in the ground filled with water that takes on a very interesting blue look when the sun shines on it probably due to the minerals or chemicals in the water, giving it a quite an unnatural look. Not one you would wish to swim in due to probably being quite toxic. So you can just about make out the water there. I mean, it is a drop of a probably, well, a good 40 meters from here to this water's edge. And I believe it's in, the water is quite deep as well. So it is a very big quarry sure what they mines possibly granite there is, there is some granite mines around this area it's not that clear to see the quarry today obviously being very misty and foggy that we're looking at at the moment most of that gray is actually water but I'm not sure how far it is because the rocks down there I thought was the, the water edge but actually that's a cliff so it drops down even further so as we pass the quarry, we're heading on towards a Whitwick Clurry now, which is not far from Whitwick. Whitwick, Whitwick. Well, by the state of my boots, I think you can see how muddy it's becoming around here. Uh, I almost went. The problem is with mud, it slows you down because you're sliding around everywhere. Anyway, we're going to continue along here, trying not to fall over in the mud. Well, the heavens have opened once again, but we're in an area now. So a bit of a scrubland now, but it used to be Whitwick Colliery. And uh, the colliery became the deepest deep fill colliery in Leicestershire. My camera seems to be going somewhere where I'm not. And continued to mine until 1986, when the mine eventually closed. Before then, it was a disaster here. When in 1898, 35 miners lost their lives, the youngest being a 13 year old. So as we've left the area of the colliery, we're gonna head down this track now, and we'll reach the road in a moment. Once we get to the road, we're gonna turn left, following it down until we get to Temple Hill. Now the track I'm actually walking on now is the Ivanhoe Way. It's a 37 mile long route around the northwestern area of the county, including Charnwood Forest and Ashby de la Zouch. The novel, Ivanhoe, by Sir Walter Scott, written in 1819, 
and set in the 12th century England, used the castle at Ashby and the surrounding countryside as its setting. It is a little bit of a miserable day today, a bit foggy, a bit damp, but warmer for this time of year. And it's good to be out. It doesn't matter what the weather is, to be outside and enjoy the countryside. So this is the season for accidents. Okay, he's putting up his Christmas lights on the roof. Now that's not that bad, but it is a damp day on a wet roof with trainers on. What could possibly go wrong? I'm not going to stay around to find out. But his son is watching him. I'm not sure how his son's going to stop him from falling 30 feet, but hey ho. Appropriately, this cottage here it's called Christmas Cottage, so the perfect season, although a bit weird in the summer. Goosey gander on the right hand side, making a statement. As we walk up towards Temple Hill, just notice this on our left hand side. It's one of those places where the little people live. Now, I had a video before the Lamley Dumbles. And we talked about the little people there in the little forest. So if you want to watch that video, then I'll leave a link to here. Anyway, let's continue up the hill. The area that we're walking through at the moment is part of the Forest of Charnwood, one of the most ancient of woodlands in England. Nearly went. Note to myself, grass is, it can be as slippy as mud. Right, we're on a bit of a quest now. So this, the area I'm trying to get to is the uh, Grace Dewar Manor School. Now, before it was a school, it was a part of a priory and a chapel there as well, and owned by several families for several hundred years. But the only problem is, it's over there, big barbed wire fences everywhere. Now the school did close down over the summer holidays. No longer going to reopen. It's an independent school. And once, hopefully, we're going to try and get up to it a bit closer. But that's trying to break the law doing so. So I'm not going to be trespassing, but I'm trying to find a reasonable route. So wish me luck and we'll see how we get there. Sometimes I don't have to supply the entertainment. There's other people that'll do it for me. <laughs> well, we're getting a bit closer. I've actually just found a footpath that might actually get us near the, the school itself. So, fingers crossed. How many post boxes does one house need? We've got two there.
this might be the closest we get but uh, mainly because of sign here Grace Dewar Priory was founded as an Augustian religious house for nuns in the mid 13th century. It lasted for nearly 300 years until it was dissolved in October 1538. It was typical of the majority of nunneries established in England after the Norman Conquest, in that it was a priory rather than an abbey and its founder was of lesser rank. After the dissolution, the site passed to John Beaumont, whose descendants held it with one brief interruption until the 1690s. So Ambrose Phillips of Geardon Abbey then purchased the state. By 1730 the buildings were ruins, with only two sections still roofed. In the 19th century Grace Dewar was transformed into the romantic ruin of William Wordsworth and other poets and artists. The site was then scarred by first a canal and then a railway, neither to enjoy a long life. The 20th century saw further ravages by nature. More recently, thanks to support from English Heritage, the Heritage Lottery Fund and other bodies, and in the autumn of 2005, a series of trial pits have helped to further our understanding of the site, as well as preserve it for the future. Okay, we're just walking along the dismantled railway now. Here's one of the markers on the left. And, uh, Hopefully this is going to take us to the road we we'll get us to our next location which is down next to the top end of Blackbrook Reservoir where we were this morning. So we're walking along the dismantled railway which used to be the Charnwood Forest Railway. Now it's a my track, we've got a pheasant running across the field there. Well, it's definitely been muddy in places. So the next stop is to get through this. Fortunately, I haven't fallen in this mud today. Although saying that, sod's law, I'll probably fall in it now. Anyway, let's keep going. Well, somehow or other, we seem to have missed the dam. It's behind me. Now I was heading for it and I was looking for it, but uh, the footpath doesn't take you anywhere near it. Although it does seem to look like that on the map. It does take you there. So, I'm afraid I'm going to have to just put some video footage in and photos of the dam. So this is what the dam looks like. Right guys, so we're nearly finished this walk for today. We're just heading back in towards Shep Shed. Uh, we'll be there in about 400 metres, I think. So what I'm going to say is I uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this walk. It's been, again, an interesting one. Some interesting sights to see along the way. Although I must admit, I do need to learn how to pronounce some words. Uh, like do were. Now it is the French way, but I don't speak French, so that don't help. The Priory, Race Dewar, Dewar. However, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Like always, have a good one. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye, hikers. <laughs>